Hey folks, Phil Davis, Ancestry Lands, AncestryLands.com. Driving on the highway here, right into Philly. You can see the traffic's a little uh, on the higher side. Uh, still in the summertime. Boy, these heat waves are just, they're coming in. They, they keep coming. I'm going to talk to you about something, folks. Do you all celebrate when your friends, when you see other people doing well and they're achieving outcomes, do you celebrate, motivate, or do you give hate? Uh, this video goes a salute and nod to one of my good friends, my brother in arms, my brother, um, Eric Kennedy, who always, they, he shares in my struggles, the things I go through, and he supports me in those struggles. And when I say that, I'm talking about in a brotherly way that he sends me information to motivate me. We both admire each other and the things that we're strong in and the things that we are weak in that the others have the strengths in. That may not make sense, but the things that I'm weaker in that I know I probably wouldn't have the strength to do, I see him doing. You're around someone that compliments you in the sense that you all are somewhat of each other's inspirational backbone. I've got another friend like that, Don Coombs who is a great resource to me. And these are the men that I do business with. These are the men that I, I, I have my community around and there are a host of others. I'm not gonna, that's not just the limitations, but those of you you've seen orbit around the ancestry lands camp and sometimes people go on their way and then they come back and that's fine. I'm not here to keep anyone. I'm here to help people grow and they move on to the next point. And if we do business again, then we do business again. You've seen me do business with Don Coombs. You've seen Eric Kennedy be a part, a spearhead in the Ancestry Lands uh, digital side growing this channel. And one thing that Eric does with me a lot is that, you know, we, we send each other funny memes on Instagram, but he also sends me things that inspire me to move forward. Things that I might not be missing, resources. He recommends books. And these are the kind of hands of the king, if you will, for a Game of Thrones terms, or right hands that you need, someone that is always seeking out education. And one thing that I admire with Eric that he does, he always is getting new certifications for his area of expertise. Now, his area of expertise is not Ancestry Lands, but he was brought along to help the IT portion of Ancestry Lands, the digital side, to get us to the next horizon. Because I'm not a very IT prone guy and that's his specialty and he's helped get us through the the last stages of the first floor building the ancestry lands building metaphorically and one thing that I see him doing is that he's always continuing learning getting certification for the DevOps you know area that he does I mean I listen to him when we talk we go to gun ranges on Sundays you know it's all science and 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 Einstein theory to an ear like mine, no more than if I were talking catheters and stethoscopes and I asked you to spell them both, people would probably mess up and not get the spelling of stethoscope correct or a sphygmometer, you know? So there are terms that we both use that are natural to our expertise that others would not um, be able to understand nor comprehend. But I listen because sometimes you can gain insight even when you don't understand things. You can learn a language that you don't know by listening to it and understanding what things are and asking questions. So when I when I looked at that, you know, and I, I'm seeing him because we're always orbiting each other and because we're in such close proximity of sharing ideas and information, it inspires me to look at you know, there are things that I, I get letters from community colleges offering classes. And when I talked about in my other video, what you do in your spare time will determine your outcomes in your full time life. I'm saying to people that there are opportunities all around you. I get these letters from these community college, one of them is Delaware Community College, and they have classes, introduction to plumbing, introduction to electrician. This is on residential side. For 50 bucks, you can take a two, three, four, or five hour class where you can learn, you know, how to fix your own plumbing in a residential home setting. You know, and I'm looking at this, I actually open it up. These are one of those 
in in uh, insert brochures you get in the mail and you probably throw away or put on the counter and never open up. Well, I always open up mail and I always at least look at it before I throw it away. This might be something like you see in those Clipper magazines, but this is actually from a community college where they offer these online programs. Some of them are hybrid. That introduction to metallurgy, welding. So again, when I look at this, I thought of them. And I said, hey, man, I want to take an introduction. You know, the idea is I'm looking at it saying, man, when can I schedule the time, <coughs> excuse me, to take an introduction to electrical, plumbing? I'm not a handy person. When I say that, I'm not a handy person when it comes to things around the house. Now, what I do specialize in is if I'm out on the street, I've, I've inserted an IV for IV fluids for a person at 33,000 feet. Cause I know a lot of men, you know, old timers, you know, people like my father, they don't respect men who can't have that handy side of them, but I'm handy in a different way. Uh, you know, you remember some years ago, there was an issue on an airline that I was flying over when I came from California and a gentleman fell, he hit his head. He was very low blood pressure. He had hypotension and he needed IV fluids. Now you can't, you're not fixing the sink. That's not what's required. You're not, you're not, you know, doing stuff around the house at that point because everybody gets on a plane for the most part. What he needed was IV fluids at 30 3,000 feet in the air. Now, there were tons of doctors, other nurses around there, but sticking people with an IV to provide IV fluids, that is something even most medical professionals don't have the skill to do or they shy away from because it's very hard to stick a needle in another person's flesh and dig around until you get an actual vein. But here comes Phil with Ancestry Lands gear on, letting people know that I am a medical professional. And the doctors, no shout out, no, no, no diss to the doctors, but doctors don't do IVs. So when you're looking at a doctor to save you, they, they, they can't. They're not going to. So I'm sitting there putting an IV in this gentleman to save his life. Blood pressure 70 over 40 and dropping. And the doctor, one of the doctors up there, shout out to the doctors at Penn who know how to get in action. She's like, yeah, give him a bolus. Now, the airplane doesn't have hospital equipment. They don't have normal needles and gauges, the tools that I'm used to. So I got to work with what they have. And it, it's it, you have to make shift. It's like being on a battlefield. You make do with what's useful. And if that is not the most handiest thing, it's the same thing as putting some duct tape together, a couple PVC pipes, and diverting water away from you know, a busted plumbing, you know, a sink that's busted. It's the same form of handyman. The only difference is it's not a house, it's your body. And I'm handy with that. And lucky to say the gentleman was safe, blood pressure up. And he was a cancer patient, terminal cancer. Did I save a life? Not in the long run, but that day that man lived to get to his destination. I touched down in Philly, saving a life or adding days to a life for a man who was told that his life is coming to an end. I say all of that because again, my journey is not done. I see that there is more for me, more for me to do. And when I look at the people around me, Eric, who's older, a little, one year older than me, less than that, he still keeps his mind pliable. He's still going after and having that hunger. The one thing about being a lone wolf is that it's lonely. Sometimes you need to be motivated by others who are hunting or have the hunger to hunt. And Eric has that. I've got people around me who are hungry to succeed. Give me one second here and get the sun out of the way. I got Mr. and Mrs. Coon, Don Coombs and his lovely family who you saw at the Great Wolf Lodge in that video. I'm leaving you evidence showing you that the people that I interview are the people I associate with. These are the people I do business with. They, they buy land and we do other business, business ideas, business ventures together to build something that's going to be evident when I'm, when I'm older. It's not gonna be evident now. It's gonna be evident much later at the end of my life. And one thing that I do is we celebrate our successes. We celebrate the, his success is my celebration. I'm motivated by his motivation. 
and I don't proceed with hate because I've got love in my heart. And the thing about being successful is that you want to be in a room full of other people who are successful as well. It, it sucks being the only person in the room and the only thing you could celebrate is yourself. It's nice to sit up and see people who are successful in their own areas and everyone toast to their success. There's no threat, there's no competition because again, what you're looking for is new inspiration. And I gotta tip my hat out for being blessed to have people who inspire me and motivate me to be successful. And again, he probably won't even know I'm doing this video, man. You know, he watches my content, but he's always watching other content to bring me information. A lot of stuff, which I do know. And sometimes he'll send me stuff and he'll ask me for my opinion. And I'll tell him, nah, man, that's, that ain't right. What they're saying, numbers don't add up. And he'll come back later. Man, I remember you told me that. And so he respects my authority and through my opinion. We give each other insights. Sometimes I go to him for his opinion. You know, and it's it's crazy because I've gotten more family advice from us uh, from him. You know, and he doesn't have children, and that's no that's no shot. You know, because he understands what it would be if he had it, so he sees it differently than the person who's in it. And the same way I'm looking at it, I can offer him insight because there are things that I'm involved in that he's not into yet. But again, you got to have people around you that motivate you and inspire you and celebrate you. And then there are people that you got to give homage to and celebrate them for inspiring and motivating you and causing you to celebrate. And it feeds off itself. It is the quintessential explanation of the term. What I've done is explain the term or the saying iron sharpens iron. And that's what it means. And thank you for to Eric Kennedy for being the iron that makes me sharpen, sharpen my iron. So lastly, I'm going to leave you with this. What you need to do is go and look for your community colleges. They have online courses. I saw one's introductory to typing, word, um, teaching skills, English as a second language or English as a primary language, grant writing. There are so many things that your community colleges are offering that you're missing. And these are under $100. I saw a class, um, I think it was real estate, introductory to real estate, which I'm very interested in because these are actually going to be licensed certifications, which I only sell real estate as an owner. But this Introduction to real estate, real estate fundamentals, which pretty much is going to be the same in my book. But that class is like fifty dollars for a six to nine for like two and a half or two and a half hours or something like that. And it might be five classes for 150 bucks. So again, yeah, you can go online and learn this, but they have it actually in a program where you can go and sit around other people who are interested in learning the same thing as you where you can make connections, build a network. You can exchange ideas. If I'm already a business owner, but again, my journey, to, my success is a journey, not a destination. I've said that before. So again, make sure you're around people who celebrate you, who motivate you, inspire you, and people whom you want to celebrate. And make sure you let them know and be humble enough and gratuitous enough to say thank you. And thank you to all my subscribers for motivating me to keep making these motivational videos to you all. I, I, I'm, you motivate me and inspire me to keep doing what I'm doing. Even the haters do it. So folks, remember, like and share, like and share. Thank you for watching. I hope you've been educated, enlightened, and least of all, entertained. I hope you gained some knowledge and wisdom from the things that I've shared with you today. Folks, remember, uh, life is about what you do, and no one's going to listen to your complaints. I'm gonna tell you right now, folks. Could you let me over? This, these, these people, man. You're gonna make a. You're gonna to try to get over, and it won't let you in any which way, folks. Phil Davis, Ancestry Lands, AncestryLands.com, and I'm gonna get in in front of her anyway. So what do you do? What do you think about it? Remember, folks, go to Ancestry Lands to get property. The link to my book, Getting Dollars from Dirt, A Beginner's Guide to Vacant Land Investing, is in the description section below. Go there and get a copy or buy a copy for a loved one, family member. Tell them that you love them by giving them a book of value. 
Remember folks, AncestryLands.com is where you go to find property. Remember, you either, and this is Philly right there, folks. You've never seen Philly. It's the city of Philadelphia right there in the backdrop. But remember folks, you either own property or you'll be owned as property. Phil Davis, Ancestry Land, signing off. Peace.